You can sprint by by yeah, you can sprint by holding R1 while moving. Be careful because sprinting is noisy and may alert guards, except it doesn't anymore because I bought silent sprinting for Sly. Air smash meter recharger. Oh sick. Moving pickpocket, mega stomp. Oh yeah, also also Carmelita's here, and Carmelita is now a playable character. She's got a gun. Best thing they ever did for the Sly Cooper games was give me a character with a gun to play as. What time is it? Okay. Oh yeah, none of them have guns, huh? I mean, the closest is Bentley with his uh, crossbow, but that just shoots little, like, darts. And it's like, oh, this one's a sleep dart. This one's a stun dart. But they gave Carmelita a gun. There was a sly ancestor, the Wild West ancestor, Tennessee Kid Cooper. Uh, he had a gun. His, uh, his, cane was, his cane was just a gun with a really long barrel. And the handle, the, like, the crook of the cane was the handle. I thought it was flavored really well. I liked it. I think a lot of the uh, the canes in this game are really well designed. Imagine calling him Kid Cooper and not Rocky Raccoon. Well, I, guess, I think it was supposed to sound like, uh, you know, like. All right, Salim. I disabled the security system in the village, but Miss Decibel has retreated to her private office above the library. We need to get in there so we can plant a bug and find out what's going on. However, my schematics show the building is heavily secured, and it appears only someone with your climbing ability can gain access. I do not understand. How will putting an insect in there tell us anything? At most, it will just annoy her. No, not that kind of bug. This is a small device that can transmit sound so we can listen to her conversation. Oh, does it also bite? Look, no worry about the bug. Right now, I need you to find a way into that study so you can let me in. I'll take over from there. All right, Bentley. I will find a way inside while you play with your bug. To be fair, copyright around that name is probably Steel Fortress. Yeah, after a certain point, it's like uh, parody versus just uh, parody and homage and all that stuff. It's a very slippery slope. It has to be a very clear and obvious parody. Uh, but no, it's supposed to be like uh, Doc Holiday, all those other like, you know, outlaw names. I liked it. I, I like that name. Tennessee Kid Cooper. I think it's got a... It, there's a nice uh, rhythm to it. Salim al Kupar. Billy the Kid and all that. Yeah! What are some other... Oh, yeah! Uh, so, there's a... The first level was Japan, and his ancestor's name was Ryoichi Cooper. Cooper does not sound Japanese. Okay, Salim, I need you to plant that bug in Miss Decibel's office, but first we need to get her out of there. I've reprogrammed those transmitters she was using on your friends with some new music. Once you place them around the room and I activate them, she's gonna come running. How do you know this? Because she happens to be a music snob, and I'm about to give her a dose of something she can't stand. Good old rock and roll. I do not care for rocks and rolling either. No, it... Never mind. Just get those transmitters in place. That episode also not called Turning Japanese? Yes, it is. I'm 
I'm just gonna bust up her house. She can't hear shit. Someone's deaf. <laughs> Salim's in there thinking I'm gonna crush her with rocks. How will how will putting an insect in her office kill her with rocks? I don't understand. Bum bum ba bum. I'm just gonna wander around, see what there is to see. Can I crawl under here? What's in here? Why did my skin have to be climbing? Why not sleeping? Really, there's nothing in here? Good job, Salim. One down, two to go. It's so weird to me the like archetype of classical music snobs hate rock and roll because it feels like all the music snobs of today are really into dad rock. Yeah, like it's because that that's such a weird archetype too. Like the the snob who's into classical music, I've never met anybody like that. I don't know if I've just been like looking for snobs in the wrong space, but like the the music snobs that I know are like, oh, the Beatles is the best band ever, period. You know, like, I was having a... I've met people who are into Pink Floyd. I'm into Pink Floyd. I love Pink Floyd. Adam Hart Mother is a severely underrated album. But, like, I was having a discussion with somebody. Yeah. Uh, and they were basically like, Ringo Starr... <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh... Uh, but they were like, uh, the Beatles is like the best band ever. Ringo is the best drummer ever. And I was advocating for Neil Part, Pert, Pert, the, uh, the, the now deceased drummer of Rush. And that like, is going to turn me into a monkey. uh, you know, Ringo was the worst member. I, I don't know what to tell you. This was, a, this was just a discussion I had and their argument was basically, Ringo walked so that Neil could run. Neil's drumming is phenomenal. And I still hold that Neil is a better, was a better drummer than Ringo. But the, the, this, these are what, these are just people I know. And it was like, you know, Ringo was around in the 60s before all of these other big rock and roll drummers make, just, it's one of those things like, he came first, which makes him the best, which I think is really like ass backwards. Because, like, other drummers have come along, other musicians have come along, and the idea is to, like, evolve the art, right? So, like, being the first, quote-unquote, you know, rock, really big rock and roll drummer, and it wasn't even the first. Rock and roll had been around for at least a decade. Does this man not listen to an album not by the goddamn Beatles? Yes, uh, this, th this, I don't, I don't know. This, this, the, this guy's young. I like to imagine in a few years when he's closer to my age, he'll, uh, he'll figure out what's going on, but, um, you know. I, I know he's listened to music, not by, uh, not by the Beatles, but I, I know he has, but I don't know. I wonder if they have any good cookbooks in here. I lose hope every day. I don't hate the Beatles at all. I like them actually. I feel like a lot of people have heard like their early stuff and assume that's all they've done. I mean, they there was a time because they were only around for like what eight years, 1960 to 1968. I remember playing a later song by. One of the weird ones. One of them was like, what? The Beatles did that? Yeah. And I mean, like, even Ringo's songs were fucking wild. Didn't he do Octopus's Garden? Wasn't that one of his? Ringo might not have been okay. This chain breaks so easily. Maybe I need to 
go on a diet. I think of it. Perfect, Celine. I'll take it from here. There. I always like the Beatles, like, weirder stuff. Like, Revolution number 9. That's, like, the go-to. Because that was, like, the first... That was the White Album. That was, like... Oh, Ring... Uh, Paul is dead. I thought Octopus was George, but I'm not super confident. I don't know. Like, I... It's one of those things where, like... They're a band. I, I, I like to think of a lot of their stuff as, like, a group... Hang on. I'm going to I'm going to explode something in her house and she's not going to notice. Nothing. All right. Okay, the old dark gun is ready for action. Yeah, I don't know who did individual things. All I know is that uh George was actually ready for the band to like uh Oh, that's funny. He changed Penelope's picture in his uh Binocucom. Bingo. Right on target. Octopus was credited to Ringo. Yeah. All I know is that George was ready for the band to... What did... So Penelope was the villain of the last level, Medieval England. Um, so she was a criminal when we met her. Uh, that's what we do is we fight other criminals. and But we recruited her for our job uh, to take back Sly's birthright. Well, she was still a criminal at heart, and she thought that, like, Bentley went soft and stuff after after everybody else retired. She was, like, you know, not doing crime stuff anymore, and she was like, we could have made a fucking fortune if we had just, uh, like, gone into weapons design and stuff. You know, if we had actually done big crime things. Like, she was ready to be a warmonger. And Bentley was like, nah, that's not cool. Warmongering is a bad thing. And so she... And so she, uh... Went off the deep end. I keep forgetting how big the... Okay. Yeah, so, um... We had to, to fight Penelope, yeah. I feel like they did they do Bentley real dirty like all the time. I know you're not a fan of Bentley, but like they finally give the the, the guy a break. They finally give him a girlfriend. Like I think it's just Sanzaru. Sanzaru just writes these characters so much different, so much more different differently. Oh look, it's Bentley's face on the book. They just write these characters different. And it, it just feels like they're regressing. It's diff It's not the same in a bad way at times. Well, shit. How do I get out of here? I don't know. Not a fan. Not a fan of what they did to Penelope. Not a fan of how they... Uh, Can hear something around. No. Sorry, refreshed. Had to miss mo miss My most of that. Oh, I was just saying that. Uh, I'm just. I, I feel like they they did Bentley a disservice. They're doing a lot of characters a disservice uh, in this game, and that just might be because it's different writers with different interpretations of the characters. What, what, Like, I don't feel the Penelope we met in Sly 3 would have done what she did in Sly 4, but... I better be careful. Decibel is right there. Fair, I don't know much about Penelope Pryor. Um, so we met her in Holland, and what she was doing was she was dressing up as a man um, named the Black Baron because, like... She was she was young. I think she when she first started doing this, she was like seventeen, and they wouldn't let minors into this competition. It was like an aerial competition, um, like a dog fighting competition. But she was a great pilot. She's a great RC specialist. She's a great mechanic. But because she was so young, they wouldn't let her do it. So she created this persona of the Black Baron to to get in, and uh, she kept winning. 
and eventually the competition became about the Black Baron. Like, the Black Baron started sponsoring the competition and all this stuff. I think the concept of the conflict is interesting, but I can't comment much on the character. The arc of the character, once she joined the gang in Sly 3, was she had a thing for Sly, and then, um... She had, she had a thing for Sly, and then realized that yes, Bentley is, like, it. also smart, and they have a lot in common, and it isn't all about physicality. Give us rock and roll. Look at him go! It's just a rock version of the theme song. It sounds like Costco brand, like like a very basic Walmart brand version of Tool. I don't know. <laughs> she feels so naked. Yeah. I was thinking that earlier when I saw her character design again. That, like she's just wearing a coat. Intolerable trash. Intolerable trash. She feels naked. I'm sad. I want to see Bob. I can, if you'd like. Uh, I can just go back real quick. Uh, we have a select right here to go back to different time periods. Time travel. Yeah, so there's El Jefe in Japan. There's Toothpick in Go West Young Raccoon. The Grizz in Clan of the Cave Raccoon. The Black Knight who turned out to be Penelope in a suit in Of Mice and Mechs. Let's, uh, I can head back real quick and we can run around as Bob for a second. Why not? In a day now. I mean, this, this load screen is probably going to take longer. It's loading an entirely different, uh, level set. We could probably... There's Bob. Bob doesn't have an available job. Do you want to run around as Bob anyway? Yeah, we can run around as Bob. He's so buff. Yeah, so when you first meet him, he is out of shape, and then there's a whole, like, training montage mission. That's just a bunch of really bad mini games. Um, That just, like, flip his character model. He goes from bottom heavy to top heavy. Dimitri once used the clockwork tail feathers as counterfeit printing plates. Yup, I remember that in Paris. God. Sly 2 is such just a perfect game. I wish the other games were as good as Sly 2. No, I don't know what I would... I don't know entirely... What I would change, at least on a big scale. I don't know what I would change about the other Sly games. Because they all kind of have their own purpose, their own feel. I just think the story is so, like, concise. Big bone. Yeah, so, um... As we, uh... As we go through the game, La Paradox has been taking the canes of the Cooper clan. Like he has all stripes. Yeah. 
uh, La Paradox has been taking the cane, so if we go back, they're using things that aren't that. He no longer has his cane because uh, La Paradox took it. Oh, can I can I pickpocket with a bone? Funny. I love fake prehistoric settings. They're so funny. Bone houses. Yeah. I I'm a I'm a big fan of this level. I especially like so the bad guy, the Grizz. He's like a street artist, kind of a. Uh, I would live in a bone house. His execution is he just stomps the ass. But yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan. Saber toothed cats are just tigers with long teeth. Appreciated. Yeah. They have, like, they, they, they all kind of have that prehistoric hunch. You know, like, the, it look they look more big chins, also appreciated. <laughs> yeah, they, they have more prehistoric, you know, Neanderthal-ish Neanderthal features. I like the top-heavy mammoths. The caveman slouch, exactly. Ah, I've been seen. But yeah, the bad guy, the Grizz, he is a like an urban street artist. Like he he raps, he does graffiti art in the middle of <laughs> in just the middle of uh you know the Arctic nowhere. Underrated villain IMO. So yeah, that's what Bob's about. Like, if I had a period, I had to go back to the same. So, the Grizz's idea, since in in his own time, he already painted walls. You know, he did, like, graffiti art. He was going to do graffiti art uh, of, like, cave paintings. Go, like, go back to the future and then dig up all of these prehistoric like cave paintings that are just his I'd just be sitting there drawing all the animals from life yeah like when the game first came out I thought the prehistoric level was kind of gimmicky I was I was huge into these games when I was a kid and I was a little upset because Bob had never been featured before. All of the other Cooper ancestors in this game uh, come from, like, the Thievius Raccoonus, or they're featured in um, the, like, Cooper Family Vault. <laughs> Flintstones ass car. But, like, Bob is original to this game. And I was, like, and I was kind of bummed. I'm like, I wanted to see, you know, all these other ancestors. Then he realizes all his cave paintings were lost to erosion and damage, and he makes no money. Well, I mean, Murray kicked his ass. That's how he made no money. But you're right. Probably, probably erosion. But yeah, let's head back to... Decibel. Delightful. El Drapo Alomacho. Super jump, finally. For some reason, they did not give Carmelita her super jump. It's part of her basic move set. All right. We're getting there. We are, um, maybe like an hour to the end of the game. Only cave paintings we can see have been protected by cavens and other things in their environment that preserve them. Interesting. I know little to nothing of archaeology or paleontology. The ones in France had to 
The ones in France had to make replicas and keep the original secret because the moisture of people being in them was damaging the contents. Interesting. Those are delicate. Damn it. All rolled up. Nothing special. Super delicate, hidden from sunlight for thousands of years. Yeah. But I mean, it makes sense. Prehistoric shit. Okay. Thanks Hit me to with our it, Bentley. Bug in Miss Decibel's office, we now have all the information we need. It appears she has been producing counterfeit documents for La Paradox, creating a false family history that will make him an esteemed member of royalty in the present day. I've managed to inspect some of the documentation, and believe me, if we allow him to get away with this, his wealth and power will make him untouchable. I believe he is planning this to be his last and greatest caper. The key to stopping him begins with us getting through that security door of the lamp shop. I haven't been able to discover what's behind it, but we know that's where Decibel will deliver the papers to La Paradise. However, since we don't want to announce our presence, we need a diversion for the guards. So I've taken the liberty of fashioning an outfit for Carmelita, who will use it to lure the guards away from their uh -huh. hosts by, uh, performing a belly dance. What? Possibly your best plan ever, Bentley. I'm sorry I didn't ask, Carmelita, but you're the only one who can pull this off. Uh, Bentley, I, I can do it. I am not getting into that outfit. I realize it's a bit revealing, but think of it as going undercover. Bentley? I'm positive the Murray could squeeze into that thing. Hey, Carmelita, you should model that outfit for us to make sure it fits. Shut up, Ringtail. I'm only doing this for the team. Listen, silk is very elastic. All right. Right, let's move out. We don't have any time to waste. Let Murray do it. Let Murray do it, you cowards. So yeah, his plan would have sucked ass unless he was using like modern tools, which you know, which we have limited knowledge knowledge of the longevity of. No, he was just like actually just painting. Like he he was using the like prehistoric bird eggs as like base for his paint or something. There was something to do with eggs, and it was all very contrived. Let Murray do it. Exactly. So the, the Murray already dressed as a geisha back in Japan. And definitely had sex with El Jefe. Biodegradable base would not last 10,000 years. Hey. It's a kid's game. That's where I take my hands off. It's a kid's game. <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> No, I like being pedantic. Me too. But like, let the Murray do it. He's a he's already bit he's already had to dance. Only when it's fun. I like I like okay, being Carmelita, a pedant when it isn't fun for other people. I like ruining door. the fun. Yeah, bust a move, Carmelita. How about I bust your face, Cooper? We're counting on you, Carmelita. His eyes, his 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 line of sight is not acceptable. Oh no, the booba! This has got to do something for somebody, right? Like this is definitely. Sly, Sly's line, Sly, Sly's eye line was not acceptable. Her boobs are so boob, of course someone's into it. This is the worst undercover assignment ever. I love Persona dancing all night and dancing in starlight. No! 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 Unacceptable. Unacceptable. <laughs> Holy crap. Thank goodness Interpol will never know about this. Oh, 
Gonna make me shake the controller again? Awful. I hate it. They gave me money. They gave me money. Son of a bitch. The hearts on the goddamn UI. She did the, the zoom. She she's shaking her hips. God. I think this is proof that uh the ratings board, like uh the ESRB in America, I think it's proof that they didn't play the game all the way through. Because I'm pretty sure this is rated E10. I think if they had put this earlier in the game, rated T for teen. The fucking eyes when she shakes her hips. I'm not gonna lie, I was I have not been paying attention to any of this. I've been looking at the button props. Because of course they would do this to anybody trying to ogle the booba. They make they they make this the most complicated uh rhythm Oh god, those eyes! This is the most complex rhythm game. Part, the most complex rhythm game in this game, like mini game. You're not allowed to ogle, you have to pay attention to the actual game. Sly, I am thinking I should go no further. I have passed my greatest wisdom onto you. The last of my friends are now retired. And I have had enough snakes and scorpions and climbing for three lifetimes. Besides, I was thinking someone should watch over Carmelita to make sure she is safe. All right, Salim. We couldn't have made it this far without Sly you. gets cucked I again. Can handle it from here. You definitely earned your How many furries do you think this Go birthed? Enough. I'm not going to say too many or not enough. Enough. I feel like I feel like there's a balance to the world because this isn't the most egregious furry content. Like Sly Cooper, it's it's the same as like Lola Bunny, in my opinion. Not as popular as Lola, but you said it, pal. this one scene specifically. Oh, um, a lot. I'm gonna say a lot. That one scene. This is definitely more than I was expecting. An underground docking station for La Paradox's blimp. No wonder we haven't seen that thing floating around. So, what's our next move, Bentley? Well, first we need something to distract those guards, so I can get to that control room. I whipped up a surprise for Miss Decibel with the leftover material from Carmelita's outfit, but I think it might work better here. Finally! Just point me in the direction of the changing room and... What the? No, let Mur Murray. Murray wants to dance his heart out. Let Murray dance. The little mouse. So, in in three of the five levels in this game, Carmelita has met uh, Sly's ancestors. And been like, I like them more than you right now, Sly, because you're a lying piece of shit. Because... Oh no... Because Sly is a gaslighting, lying piece of shit. But, uh... I like the idea that Sly just keeps getting cucked. the 
Listen, they would have been way better if they had let Murray dance instead of her. Not because, haha, boy dress in girl, girl clothes funny. But, like, just having them rock the outfit and the guards be into it. Like, own the world, Murray. That's what happened in Japan. Uh, Murray was dressed as a geisha, was dancing up on stage with, like, fans and shit. And the guards were way into it. They had, like, the heart eyes and stuff. Like, slack-jawed tongues out. Ogling Murray. What's this way? I want to go this way. What's over here? Murray is universally attractive in this canon. Please let him dance. And, okay, that's just the other way. <laughs> Gender non-conforming icon, Burry. Murray. Burry. Gender non-conforming icon, Murray. It's him. I could never be them. I should use a another fan. I try so hard. I could never be them. Yeah, where'd the boost on the RC car go? You just cannot match the Murray. I I know that, and I need I need to learn my place in the world. It'll always be underneath the Murray. Wait a minute. Phrasing. Um. Uh. I could I could never match the Murray. I'm just gonna leave it the way you said it. about how many furries this game birth. All right, the coast is clear to Look, the control I, room. I'm just saying if you put a conventionally attractive personality type on an anthropomorphic character, it has nothing to do with the anthropomorphization. Himbos just be hot. Like, the big dumb guy, like, big heart, small brain. Time to show this security it's, 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 it's a cute personality type. I will not be taking criticisms. Well, I'm gonna need all of this, aren't I? They're giving me so much time, extra time right here at the beginning. I'm going to need so much of this, aren't I? No! Damn it. Let me sit up straight. Let me... No! 
Okay, that that was not nearly as bad. At 30 seconds left? Okay. I was just panicking for no reason. Bright side. Once this game is over, I'll never have to do the bad hacking mini games. I'm not going to say again, just for a while. I won't have to do them again for a while. Password way too easy. Overriding security. Power grid rerouting. Accessing laser network. PC load letters shut down in 3, 2, 1. Yes. Poindexter. He is a Poindexter. I'm not sure. I must have tripped some kind of fail safe backup. Hold on a sec. Poindexter. Murray, we can't wait on Bentley. We won't get past those security cannons, and those rat troopers look serious. Murray, remember to use the circle button to stomp and pick up things. Use the square button to toss those rats, pal. All right. Ah. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. No, he's gone. That guy had something shiny. such an American word to me. Poindexter. It's apparently a last name. Like, obviously it's not as popular much anymore, but apparently it's a, like a surname. Three musketeers. One step behind as usual. May you never change. I think I told you this last time. And may you Probably. Stay yeah. Ah, Cooper. You're so pathetic. You don't even realize you've already lost. We haven't lost yet, La Paradox. Oh no! Bonjour, my large friend! What took you so long? Oh, drat! Celine! Hello, Cyril! I found this filthy old scoundrel unconscious outside. Actually, he's yesterday's trash. Precisely why I threw him away. But I don't understand. I thought you were after him. You're right. You don't understand. I don't care about that old bag of bones. Just his cave. Which, as you can see, I already have. Uh-oh. Double drat. Well, good. Then our deal is complete. I'm coming aboard. Hold that blimp! So sorry, Sherry. But with Monsieur Cooper here, I am afraid the schedule has changed. And I must make my exit now. I cannot risk that flea-bitten rat ruining my plans. Yeah, it comes from the Felix the Cat character. Yeah, I remember Poindexter came up, I think in the Sly 2. Uh, finale, like the last level of slide two. Wait, Deja vu. Wait for me. He's got the cane. He's got the documents. Sly, it's always Sly. To it's it's because of Bentley. Bentley's a Poindexter. All of our futures are in peril. You got to stop them. How Celine? I tried <laughs> to stop him. You'll be fine, Sly. Right now, you've got to stop that pachyderm. I'm on it, like stink on a skunk. 